So I've been using 11T for about a year now and when I started I had a couple of criteria that I wanted to make sure it was able to do before I sort of jumped all in on 11T and one of those was SEO friendly URLs and the other one was that it was going to test well as far as uh, Lighthouse accessibility and SEO and it's done that and and then some and, and continues to impress me on how far you can go with it. So I wanted to talk about some of the ways that you can build out 11T to sort of compare with a WordPress site and that you can get SEO friendly URLs, you can get a fast site, a light site that's easy to manage, and you can continue to scale it as I have it. I'm using it here for my, my site here, um, designed to SEO. I'll launch my site right, here, right now to kind of show you the process I go through when I'm working on, working on a site. So here I have my 11T site here. I'll just right click on it, go to my terminal, type in npm start and then starting up node and running 11t there and here it, here it runs locally for me from there i do edits and push to github and then it goes to netlify but it, it's really made developing uh, so much easier like i said it also performs really well on lighthouse and, and gives you sort of everything you're looking for as far as performance so i'll run a lighthouse report right here quick just to kind of show you that it does perform well and it pretty much performs 100 percent right out of the box. Um, I'm able to get 100% on performance, accessibility, best practices, SEO, and I can continue to, to increase those speeds. But I've basically just set up fairly straightforward 11T site and was able to get everything I want out of it. So I wanted to do a series of videos that would cover 11T because there's a lot of uh, tricks along the way. What I was able to do was break it up into parts. So this is going to be part one, the setup. And as I was saying, it's a really lightweight, scalable way to build a website. I've been using it for about a year and it's been able to do not only simple websites, but blogs, uh, extensive blogs, works as like a an application would also work if you're using Gulp or different types of applications like React. You can actually build out applications with it. You can experiment and, and take it much farther than just a simple static building website, which is what it is. It's a static building website, but it, it also, the way it's lightweight and uh, doesn't really hold you to one aspect of development, it allows you to integrate real easy. It starts by giving you the option to just add HTML and CSS right out of the box and you're already up and running. Uh, it's used by many big companies like Google and, and Netlify and continues to get uh, more streamlined and, and popular as it's growing its demand and uh, user popularity. So what we'll do is we'll start off by just building it out real quick. Like I said, it does do SEO friendly URLs. So here you can see, for example, I guess I'll step back a second. I have also a theme that you can grab from my github this is on the 11d theme site as well and this is a broken down version of my designed seo site that i created a theme with so that if you're interested in this sort of blog style layout and seo friendly urls uh, breadcrumbs a lot of the features what i did was basically is when i was with wordpress you would have a lot of these features for seo right out of the box with yoast and so i i kind of mimicked what you can do as far as here we have our breadcrumb we're on the blog page and if we step one more out to the web development page we get our url friendly here and we step one more we go into the blog itself and then we have each category leading right to the blog so that we can step back to the the subcategory then to the category and then uh, that way we can have multiple categories with subcategories there so it allows you to expand out on it quite a bit and then just static pages as well obviously so this is a good template to use to get started if you are looking to have multiple categories with subcategories and uh, a quick responsive grid style that works well. Um, so yeah, I wanted to break that down basically and how that all started and, and starts with just simply installing it from the ground up. So this video, we're just going to install 11T. We're going to check our node version. I'll leave a link for this page. My blog is on in the description. So if you want to follow along, I'm basically just going to walk down the blog and, and build out the site. So 
we have a project folder. It all starts with the basic project folder. Go into where we're gonna start building the site here. So this is an empty folder we're gonna start from and we'll open terminal there. Right click new terminal and we'll check our version of node. It says I'm running node so I'm good to go. If you're not running node you'll have to get that installed. Next we're going to just npm init y so we can install an instance of node in this project here, our starter project. Then we can install Leventy, our scoped Leventy here. And so now if I go back to the folder, we have node um, initiated here with our package. So now we're just gonna go back to our terminal, install Leventy, and we're pretty much almost there. Uh, there's not a whole lot to it. We're just gonna change up our scripts a little bit so that we can easily start running a standard 11T serve right here, which is what 11T uses to the script to launch the server. It comes with browser sync. I think they're working on building their own version of that. All right, now that we have our node installed, our script running, and so we'll move on to step two here. We're gonna create our base file. So we're gonna make a file called 11TJS. Go into my project folder, new file, and we'll call it 11TJS. We're going to create a source folder here, and that's going to be our, our primary input folder. I'll grab the code before we make the folder here, and we'll put that set up in 11TJS. And you can go with the defaults. The default is, is just going to be right in the root there, and we're going to stick with the default site folder, which is where it's going to build the site. You actually don't even need to create this file. If you want to do a minimal run the defaults in 11T, it's so minimal that all you really need is this HTML file here so we're going to create a source folder next get a new folder src kind of the standard that everybody's going with then we are going to create an index file which will be our home page so we'll create in our source folder now we're going to be building out everything from there. Um, now the 11T sits outside the source, 11T JS sits outside the source folder. And then from here, everything we do is pretty much inside the source folder. Uh, so we'll do a new, we're doing a new file, paste in the boilerplate, save this as index HTML. Okay, so that should be everything we need right there. Um, so just following along to step three, we can run npm start. We should see our site folder being built and then we'll go to our local host. Here I'm at the terminal, npm start. There's our build. I'm already running on port 880, so this is gonna be port 881 for me. And there we go. We got our uh, Leventy site up and running with sort of the minimal amount of code or boilerplate HTML. From here, you can just easily start building out the site. You have node running. You have your package file, 11T right here. We're on 1.0.1. That was just updated the other day, so pretty cool. If you wanna add in other, other developments in your project, you just build out out your other developments in node like you normally would and you can integrate them next we're going to be creating our includes folder inside the source folder and the includes folder is an expected 11t file where 11t will be looking for the layouts of the site and here's a image of what our project folder will look like once we get this setup portion done and see we're going to put an includes folder inside the source folder and then inside that we're going to have a base file uh, we're going to be using njk for our dynamically populated build files and we're going to be using html and markdown for our, our page files i went with numjucks for a templating language because it was more popular and had good documentation and it's been really easy to work with the syntax is great so i'm happy with that templating language if you are interested in using any of the other templating language up here at the top i have a list of the current templating languages you can use so if you're more familiar with say like liquid or ejs you can implement any of those um, any of these listed here at the current time. All right, so now we can add in our includes folder inside the source folder and we'll get our base file inside of the includes folder. So we'll go to the source folder, add a new folder, call it underscore includes. And inside our includes folder, we'll create our first layout file and we'll call that base.njk. 
K for nun nunjucks. And once we have that in there, what we're going to be doing, now we can bring all of that static content over from the index.html file and put that right into our base file. So we cut that out of there and put it into our base file. And now we're ready to work with some front matter. Front matter is a concept of layout chaining, connecting files together. It's kind of like JSON and it comes from the node package YAML and really important in this static website building. So we'll grab this snippet here of front matter and we're going to put that where our static boilerplate was in the index file. And now we're connecting that base NJK file to our index file. And we can grab this key data here from the front matter as we start working in, in the base file. All right, so we're gonna see this the same thing that we had, but now it's dynamic. We can move down here and we'll grab our numjux title tag here that is pulling from the front matter key title. We're gonna replace our titles with that numjux in the base file, take out any of the static content here, and then we'll be taking the article tags leaving in the main tags and putting those over in the index which will be our basically our content and we'll come back scroll down here and we'll grab the 11t provided variable of content that pulls the content in from all the pages copy that paste it in where we had our article tags and save that it should be updated there all right, now this is what our base NJK file should look like. And here's what our index HTML file should look like with the front matter and content. Now we're ready to add in our style file into the source folder. We'll go into source folder, create a new file, give it a H1 so we can reference it's working. Put a color of blue and save that as style.css inside the source folder. Now we have to go to the 11t config folder because uh, anything that's gonna get passed through into the build folder is gonna need a, a pass through function. So we're gonna allow that style sheet to pass through and we'll just put that function in the config function and that should build it for us right there. It just built it in the site folder and now we can add the link to our base file. This head will eventually be more dynamic, but for now this is gonna get us started. And so that should be populating. There we go, we got our styles up and running and that will conclude this first part of building out an 11T site, having a, a base to work from. From here, we're going to be adding in more includes. We'll be dividing up the header into its own NJK file and the footer and just continue parsing out the sections to make it more dynamic and easier to work with.